everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our hybrid session. My name is Jeff Huang with EXP Realty, your 2022 Educational Committee Vice Chair. Some quick housekeeping items before we get started. Virtual participants will be muted in the meeting, and we encourage all to please enter any questions you have into the chat box. The speaker will answer your question during the Q&A towards the end. This session is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel, West San Gabriel Valley Realtors. Our co-host today is Daniel Ng, who will introduce our topic and guest speaker. Daniel, take it away. Hi, I'm Daniel Ng. I'm part of the uh, members of the uh, Education Committee, co-host with uh, Jeff. Um, it's very hot outside, and I think this is a cool place to hear. Besides you, uh, being cool, and we get to uh, learn a lot uh, about reverse mortgage. Okay, uh, we have our work with you in, uh, we, uh, well, the today's uh, topic is uh, ramping up your listing in reverse. I guess we reverse stand for reverse mortgage, right? Good. Okay, our guest is Ryan. Uh, he's, uh, Friend cannot make it, but uh, Ryan, this is good. Uh, so let me give a really brief introduction about Ryan. Uh, he is recognized as uh, one of the two leading reverse mortgage educators in the nation. So he's very knowledgeable. And uh, Ryan Reese, his last name, not giving a uh, senior 62 or older a new lease on life for educating them about the reverse, uh, new reverse mortgage. Uh, the company has a phenomenal growth because uh, they emphasize on the education so people know what the reverse mortgage and how to use it. And they are committed to educating the customer so they will make a wise decision and whatever or not, uh, reverse mortgage is right for them. So it's, it's a very good um, uh, information. So without further ado, um, let me uh, bring on uh, Ryan. Yeah. So he'll give us a, a talk about, I don't know, one or two hours. And then later on, we'll have a Q and A questions, just in case you have questions about reverse mortgage. Uh, Marisa will take over on that. Okay. and it's, uh, now we, let me introduce uh, Ryan. Thank you so much. Maritza, who runs my class for me. Maritza, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, why don't you take it away and just throw it back to me when you're ready. Okay, thank you. So thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Um, and thank you so much for having us today. We are super excited to be able to uh, be here with you guys today. Um, so today, like uh, you guys mentioned, we do have Ryan from Reverse Mortgage Educators as our instructor to show you how you can earn more listings with a reverse mortgage for a purchase. So I do just want to mention, look, mention a couple of things before we begin. If you'd like to receive a copy of our PowerPoint uh, today, uh, please just go ahead and either sign in in our sign up sheet or um, leave your business cards with Ryan. Um, and we will get that to you as soon as possible. Also, like Jeff mentioned, we will be taking uh, questions throughout the class today. So for those of you uh, tuning in uh, via Zoom, please, uh, you can either put them in the chat box for the Q&A at any time. Also, if you can, please stay until the very end as we will talk about how you can er take advantage of our complimentary software and marketing materials to reel in the next listing. All right, Ryan, you can take it from here now. Okay, so uh, I got a lot. Got a lot of introductions done. So let's just jump right into material. Uh, what I want to make sure you all understand about today is uh, today the class is probably more about a real estate agent's relationship with a reverse mortgage and how that relates to your clients. Why is that important? Because over the last fifteen years of doing reverse mortgages, in the last about ten years of working with realtors. I believe there's a big connection between a client asking an agent about a reverse mortgage and why they're doing that and how that can actually help your business, okay? So I just want to get started and going over the three top ways that I've actually seen a reverse mortgage help your business. 
And then we'll talk about the loan a little bit after that, okay? So let's just get started with some interesting things here. I want you all to know, without even knowing what a reverse mortgage is, if a client were to ask you what a reverse mortgage is, I want you to know something very important, that many times a client asking you what a reverse mortgage is doesn't mean they want a reverse mortgage. They've heard that a reverse mortgage might help them maybe get rid of a mortgage payment or get them some money out of their home. They've heard these things, but a lot of times they don't even know what they're asking. They just heard that maybe a reverse mortgage can help an older homeowner with their home. So now they're asking you this question. And you may think, oh, they want a reverse mortgage. Well, I can tell you that's only that case. Most people that start off asking about a reverse mortgage would probably do something else that they could. But yet they've heard that maybe this is the one thing that will help them. Well, here's a twist. I can tell you that probably more than 50%, probably 60% of the people that ask about a reverse mortgage, they never get one. They ask about it, they learn about it, they either figure out it's not for them, or maybe they don't qualify, or maybe they figure out the house that they're living in isn't the right house to do it in. So if I were to tell you that someone were to ask you what a reverse mortgage is, you know 60% of the time, they're not gonna get a reverse mortgage. What do you think their alternatives are? There's not a lot of them. And for many of them, it'll be to sell their home. So we'll learn a little bit later in class about how what the largest demographic of people selling their homes are picking up over. So I can tell you many times that the demographic that sells their homes the most, which is our older clientele, actually start out asking about reverse mortgage, and then end up selling their home. So it's important for you to know. Because if they're asking you, and you know, well, you're asking about a loan, but there's a pretty good chance you're going to sell your home, and I'm a real estate agent, well, you should probably keep track of them. You should probably understand that they're looking for answers about, I own a home, I have equity, and I can figure out how to make this home work in retirement. And that might mean selling it. So I just want you to know the number one point I want you guys all to take home today. Is that if a client is asking about a reverse mortgage, many times they're not going to get one. And many times what they're trying to figure out is, how am I going to own a home for retirement? And that might mean selling the home that I have. So it's very important for you all to know that. There are two ways that I've seen a reverse mortgage actually call a realtor. And not a loan guy like me necessarily is this. There are a lot of homeowners, older homeowners selling homes. But a lot of them go to rebuy their next home and they figure out one of a few things. Number one, it's harder to qualify for a regular loan. It doesn't get easy to qualify for regular financing when you retire. You use your social security income as your main income and maybe some other income on top of that. But it just makes it difficult to rebuy a home when you have a hard time qualifying for the loan to get it. Now, the second thing is that a lot of times They'll look to get a loan, but they're concerned about taking even another mortgage payment in retirement. Well, a reverse mortgage for purchase, right? This is not the refinance that you see a lot on TV where people say, I'm going to refinance my home and not have a mortgage payment. We actually have a reverse mortgage purchase loan, which means that somebody can buy a home and not have to make a mortgage payment after they buy the home using this loan. And on top of that, you can actually qualify for this loan to buy a home but maybe you qualify for any other finance. So that's interesting as a real estate agent. If we know that more than half the homeowners right now selling their homes are over 55, and we now have a loan that can help them buy their home that they're gonna live in after you sell their current one, but it's easier to qualify for, and they might not have to make a mortgage payment when they buy the home, well, that's very interesting for you all. And so we are doing a lot of reverse purchase loans. We'll learn about that. A lot of reverse mortgages have been done. I mean, I've been doing reverse mortgage for 15 years. I've done a lot of that. And here's what I can tell you. A lot of people that have reverse mortgages don't even know how their heirs are going to get the home if something happens to them. And I can tell you that a lot of heirs, most of them that I work with, don't keep a reverse mortgage home when they inherit it. They want to sell it. So the question then is, how do you make yourself valuable as a real estate agent? So that when a client with the reverse mortgage passes away and the heirs inherit the home, how do you make sure you're the listing agent? That would be good to know, wouldn't it? We're going to go over that today. This is the third way that I've actually seen a situation where if you know about a reverse mortgage and how it works, it can get you a listing. 
So at least we're clear about these two things today. In addition to just learning about the reverse mortgage in general. So this is some cool things that maybe when you sign up for a reverse mortgage class, you didn't know you're going to learn about. I'm going to teach you about a reverse mortgage. As real estate agents, I want you to know how reverse mortgage gets you business. If you're going to get somebody business, why not you all? Well, why not me? But check it out. You all know how a regular mortgage works, which is that you use a loan to buy a home. Or you use a loan to refinance a home. Either way, you're borrowing money from a bank and then you're paying it back slowly over time, right? That's the way a loan works. A risk mortgage is the same thing. It really is. You've borrowed money to buy a home or you've refinanced a home. You've used a reverse mortgage. It works the same way. You're just borrowing money. You're borrowing money against your house. Same difference. Really, the only difference is that on a regular mortgage, if I borrow money to buy a home or refinance, I expect to get a statement. Statement's going to show how much I owe. It's going to show me payment for that month. That's how they work. A reverse mortgage, you borrow money, you get a statement, it shows how much you owe. It actually shows what the cost is for the month. Here's the difference. Because if you say, you know what, I don't want to make that payment this month, you don't have to. But what will happen next month is when you get a statement, you'll now owe what you did the month previous plus what you didn't pay. And that's really it. So if you get a reverse mortgage, you're just getting a regular loan, but every month you get the option to say, I don't want to send that in. And if you don't send it in, nobody cares. We'll just add that amount to what you owe. And then next month, you can do it again. You literally just decide every month when you have this loan, if I want to make a payment or not. No one tells you what to do. No one says you can't make a payment. You have to, nobody says anything. You decide what is the best for you that month. And now for some people, that might mean never making a payment again. And as an industry, we don't care. You know that we don't care because every month we just add whatever the payment was due for that month onto what you owe. And every month you see your balance go up, up and up. If you would have sent the payment in, you would have had a regular loan. You could treat a reverse mortgage like a regular loan. If you send a payment in for that month, you don't have a reverse. You just sent in what was due for the month and your balance does not go up. We don't tell anybody what to do. We simply give you the ability to choose. So a client could say, well, okay, smart, smart Alec, you're going to give me a loan that's like a regular loan and every month I can decide not to make a payment and that's up to me. What if I never make a payment again? If I did that with a regular loan, I'd be foreclosed on. Well, the reverse mortgage is designed to have that extra feature. Where if every single month for the rest of your life, you say, I'm not going to send in that money. We don't care. Just know if you live for 20 years after getting your reverse mortgage and you don't make 240 payments, you can expect your balance will have gone up 240 times. And you'll owe quite a bit more than when you got the loan. But that's simply a function of a client every month saying, I'd rather not send that money in. I'm going to keep it in my pocket. I'm going to use it for something else. But I know if I make that decision, I can expect next month my balance to go up by whatever I kept in my pocket. And that's really all a reverse mortgage does. It gives a client an option every month to say, I'll send something in or I won't. If I send it in, I just treat it like a regular loan. If I don't, I treat it like a reverse my balance goes up next month. That's all you get up. So literally, if a client were to ask you, how does a reverse mortgage work? You now can just say, well, do you know how your loan works now? Well, sure. I borrowed money and I make a payment. Reverse mortgage, you borrow money, and if you don't make the payment that month, your balance goes up by whatever you did not send in. That's it. You can explain it to them like that. Because everything else is pretty much like a regular mortgage. You're just borrowing money against the house. You're not giving anybody the house. You can pay it back. You can refinance it. You can sell it just like a regular loan. So we're going to learn more about that. Yes, sir. Can we use a reverse mortgage to refinance a existing default mortgage? Yes. So this question was in case you didn't hear if we have a house that has a defaulted mortgage on it, can we use a refinance of a reverse to pull that out of default and do a reverse mortgage? Yes. Okay. So that's one of the things we'll learn coming up is how our loan qualifies differently. But we certainly get a lot of people actually out of default. Uh, sometimes they get people out of bankruptcy with their first mortgage. 
It just depends on that particular situation. So a reverse mortgage, uh, well, the government should reverse mortgage, okay? That's the majority of the one that's being done out there. It's called a home equity conversion mortgage. The acronym is HECM, H-E-C-M. If you ever see HECM or home equity conversion mortgage, that's a government insured reverse mortgage. You see, the government doesn't call it a reverse mortgage. Why? Because it's not a reverse mortgage unless what? You decide not to make a payment. So instead, they came up with the name home equity conversion mortgage. Whatever you call it, it's the same thing. They uh, started doing these loans about 1989, 1990, right? And so up until about 2010, we only had a way to refinance a house with a reverse mortgage. In other words, a client that might say, man, I'm having a hard time making a payment in this house, or I need to get some equity out. I don't even care this about living here, but I just need a loan that I qualify for. Well, up until 2010, we could only do a refinance. A client could only use a reverse mortgage to stay in the home they're in. But in 2010, we said, look, you can now use this as a purchase loan. So that kind of helps you all out as realtors, right? Because really a reverse mortgage as a purchase loan is cool because we can get this loan for people and maybe they don't qualify for anything else. You'll qualify for a FHA loan, you'll qualify for a Fannie Mae loan, a Genie Mae loan, you don't qualify for any of those things. You're thinking, ah, I can't get a loan. As a matter of fact, why would I even sell this house if I can't qualify for a loan to buy my next home? A reverse mortgage qualifies totally different than a regular loan. Probably 65%, 70% of the loans we do might be never get any other kind of financing. So when we talk about this as a purchase loan, it makes more sense as a real Because we're talking about now the ability for someone to say, I want to sell and move, but I'm not going to get enough cash to buy the next house all cash. I'm going to have to get a loan. And now I'm worried about qualifying for a regular loan. And when I get a regular loan, I have a mortgage payment. So now we have a loan where we say, look, if you don't qualify for anything else, we'll still get you a home loan. And on top of that, if you don't want to make a payment every month, you don't have to. Now for some people, maybe they'll say, right, I don't really want a reverse mortgage. But I don't qualify for anything else. And we're like, okay, remember I told you, you decide every month it's a reverse mortgage. So if the only reason you're getting a reverse mortgage is you don't qualify for any of the loan, that's cool. When you get your statement every month, Make a payment. Now you don't have to worry about the fact that you felt like a loan that's a reverse was one that you didn't want. When I'm telling you, treat it like a regular loan. The nice thing is that if you treat it like a regular loan for seven or eight years and something happens, you try to cash, you can just stop paying. And now you're using the reverse mortgage for what it was intended for. You keep your money in your pocket every month. So how we use the loan is totally up to the client. It's not up to us as a bank. It's up to the client. Now, as a bank, we would prefer nobody ever get a payment. You know why? Because there's more interest on top of interest. We make more money. So we don't advertise. Well, these, we're starting to nowadays. But up until about seven or eight years ago, I never heard anybody say, you can make a payment on reverse because the banks are like, dude, we make less money. Why are you telling like that? But I started saying, well, some people want the idea that they can do whatever they want to do. They don't want to feel like they're being pigeonholed to a loan and they don't have any choices. So let's give them choices. Maybe we'll do more loans and then you can make your money through volume. So the idea here is that we want reverse mortgages to be used. We want people to know how to make them very efficient. And now for a real estate agent, I want people to be able to sell their homes and qualify to buy another home when maybe they didn't think they could do that before. In the years of God I started doing these loans. And I used to believe when people told me something. I don't believe people anymore. I've been jaded because people would say, right, I don't want to sell my house. I don't need to talk to a real estate agent. I just want to do a loan and be here. That's it. And so I would say, okay. But then we want to start running through their options of staying in the house. And we learned that staying there is probably not the best thing for them. 
maybe the loan, the reverse mortgage that would get them to stay in the home isn't giving as much cash as they wanted to. Maybe they just don't qualify. Maybe the home is not good in shape. Maybe they really did want to move somewhere else, but they didn't think they could. So when people say, I don't plan on moving, I'm like, I don't know about that. Because I've heard this a lot, and then it changes. As a real estate agent, that makes it tough for you. Because the client is telling you, I don't need to talk to you. But maybe they don't need to talk to you because they think that they don't have any options and that a realtor is going to waste their time. Why don't I talk to a realtor? I can't get a loan to buy another home. Why don't I talk to a realtor? I might have to go buy a piece of junk somewhere. Why don't I talk to a realtor? So the idea is that sometimes it takes a little bit to get through to them what they can do. And then all of a sudden, you become an important piece of the puzzle. There are all there's studies everywhere. There's, uh, what do you call it? Polls done. Do you want to age in your home? Do you want to stay in place? And for a long time there, I think it was running like 72% of the people said, I'm going to stay in my home when I retire. And yet, why are over half the people that are retired selling their homes? That means 20% of the people aren't lying. Right? No, they're not lying. I'm joking. But I think what they don't understand is that sometimes life chooses a different path than what we want it to. We end up selling a home we swore we were never going to sell. And the numbers in the data. You know, uh, National Association of Realtors, you all have been through it probably. They do their annual study of home buyers and home sellers. And the last two that I was tracking, which are 2019, I think 2020, we're saying 55% of the people selling the homes are over like 55 years old. So even though 72% were saying we're not selling, and then 55% were selling, well, there's 20% in there that don't realize they're going to sell, and they do. And a lot of times I can tell you it's driven by cash. I'll get to that in a second. But I just want you to know that when a client tells you, I don't, I'm not going to sell my home, we got to look a little further into what's happening with them. I always look to see what okay, condition their house is in. Most people don't want to let their house deteriorate, chipping paint, etc. That's a sign that maybe I'm trying to cash. Some people in poor health, if they have a two-story home, I'm not going to move. You sure about that? You got a bedroom downstairs in the bathroom? No. So we have to start looking at other things. We're talking to certain homeowners because they just have sometimes unreal expectations that you need to be there to help them when they do, when they figure it out. If a client initially thinks, I'm going to stay in my home and I've heard a reverse mortgage is going to help. Okay? After all, reverse mortgage can what? Make your payment optional. That's nice. Keeps money in your pocket. A reverse mortgage kind of gives me safety you knowing if I do never make a payment again, I can stay there. So a client might be hearing this and thinking about this, and they're going to ask you, how does that reverse mortgage work? And now I know you all know to say, well, it's like the loan you have now, except if you don't send in a payment, they just increase your balance by whatever you did not send in. That's it. Everything else makes still the same. So you know how to answer that question now. Good. What you've done is kept them close to you, right? Because they didn't go out somewhere else and ask that question. They didn't go ask another real estate agent. They didn't ask the loan officer that knows a real estate agent. You don't want to do that. You want to keep them right here, okay? So then the next question they might ask you, just so you can go a little bit further, is, well, if it's like a regular loan, can I get cash out? And the answer is, of course. If you see up here, you can receive it. You can do a reverse mortgage when you finance. And just like a regular loan, you can say, I want some cash out. You can say, I want to set up an equity line. You can do both. And I can tell you that's the majority of what people ask about reverse mortgages. Like two or three questions deep, and that's it. Hey, Mel! Good to see you. Can you sneak in? No! <laughs> okay. We know Mel, right? Okay, we love Mel. All right. So we're about to go into an example of a reverse purchase loan. But what I all want you to see here is just a few things. Number one, this loan is basically like a regular loan that has an optional payment. The reason I tell people that is I don't want anyone to feel like they're losing control of their home. It's our biggest asset, okay? You look at the equity in my house compared to my bank account, you'd be like, dude, what's wrong with you? I don't know. I guess hopefully I'm like lots of other people. It's my biggest asset. 
Why would I ever want to do a loan where I feel like I've lost control of that? I've given it to somebody. So remember, with reverse mortgage, you have not done that. You've just given yourself the ability to say, I'm going to skip a payment this month or next month or for a year, and nobody's going to bother me. They'll just add those payments onto what I owe. Maybe I skip payments for a year, and now my balance has gone up by 7000 bucks. Hey, was that so bad? I took a year off my... That sounds like it would help somebody. Sometimes our problems are temporary. So maybe you don't want a permanent fix for a temporary problem. Maybe a reverse mortgage for taking a payment out for a year solves a problem, and you go back and make a payment again. Being a regular loan, you can't do that. You can do that with this loan. So there's so many ways to do this and not have to do it how maybe people think a traditional reverse mortgage works, or instead just giving people options of letting them keep them home. Right? That's what I want y'all to know about a reverse mortgage. Okay. The other thing that I want you to know about reverse mortgage is more and more purchased reverse mortgages are happening, which means more clients are selling their homes and buying with reverses. Now, interest rates. Have you guys heard about inflation? Jeez. Every day. <laughs> I hear it on my way to work while I'm at work when I get home from work and then I dream about it. Inflation reduces how much money is out there, right? So with a reverse mortgage, what it does is it lowers the amount of money we're willing to lend. And since February, the amount of money we can lend a reverse mortgage has lowered drastically. So what does that mean? That means people that were going to refinance six months ago and are calling me now saying, right, I'm going to do that reverse, you know what I'm saying? I can't help you anymore. And then they go, well, what am I going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Why did you wait so long? Well, I just, I didn't want to do that first time, but now I really need it. Okay, well, what are your options? Can you get a radio loan? No. Any more money? No. So security hasn't gone up that much. I don't have any more retirement savings than six months ago. Well, let me tell you something about a reverse purchase loan. I know you don't want to sell your home, but don't you at least want to have a home? Let's talk about a different house. We'll do the reverse mortgage to buy that home. So instead of being in the home you're living in now and not having a payment, We'll just have you buy a different home and have that payment. One that the numbers work better on. It usually means you're buying a less expensive home to make the formula work. And that's what people are doing. Because it's a left between struggling in my current home, which I can only do for so long, or actually listing and selling and moving, then that's going to be my option. And if you would have talked to me six years ago when I told people this, you'd be like, Ryan, it's never going to happen. But then when I look at the studies and I see 55% of people 55 years and older are moving, I'm like, it's happening. Even though you're telling me it's not, it's happening. And we have to do big, big changes on Friday even to our, to our industry. I probably have six people that thought they were getting loans just right off the top of my head that I have to call back to and tell me not. This is what's happening with our financial markets. And that's just me. That's my own personal type one. That's not even my company. I got to go back and look at the company and see how many loans are not going to be done right now because of the changes in the market. And I know some of these people, and our company will probably lose 30 loans in this next week from interest rate increases. And I know 30 of those people are gonna be like, oh, well, this is gonna be cool to have that I can do without it. They're gonna be like, Brian, what am I gonna do? And I'll be like, I don't know, let's look at your options. And I can tell you from calling half home, I'm gonna recommend that they sell their home because I know that they're barely making it and with inflation eating more of our money, if they were in trouble six months ago, it's tough even now. So this is a real thing that we're seeing every day and I'm seeing it in action. So we still have a good handful of people that can get refinances, that get money out and they're okay. But we have a lot of people who turn the corner and they can't. So let's talk about some of these people. Some of these people I'm going to call this week and I'm going to have a conversation about selling their home. I'm not going to sell it. But those agents who refer them to us or whatever, I'm going to call them and go, look, this person might need to sell their home. I can't help them with a the refinance anymore. Let's take this person, for example, 73 years old. Why do I put 73? Do I only loan people to people 73 years old? Do I discriminate against every other age? No. Can I legally discriminate? Actually, I can. No, I know. I got you. 
I discriminate on age. How do I do that and not and keep my job? I don't know. The government says I can do it. Here's how that works. I put 73 years old up there because I lend money based on age. Okay. First of all, if you're 55 years or old, younger, you can't get a reverse mortgage. And you can't tell me I can make you. I'm safe for some reason. I don't know. But at least, you know why? Because they're discriminating against younger people. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> no, if you're older. So now I'm helping older people. I'm saying, look, I'm going to lend you money based on age. Why? Who cares? Because think about this. If you can get a reverse mortgage at 55 years old, and you tell me, Ryan, I'm never going to make a payment to you as long as I live. And I'm like, wow, how many months is that? Your life expectancy at 55 years old is like 87 years old. Uh, that's like 32 years. You're never going to make a payment to me. That's how many. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of money you're not going to pay me. So I may give you a really large loan amount and then have you miss all those payments and the housing market goes down. What happens to me? I lose my shirt because I've lent you too much money based on how long you're going to live. And I don't know what the housing market is going to be. Now, let's go to the other street. Let's say you're 103 years old. It's happened. 103 years old. We do loans for 103 years old. We've done it. And I'm like, what's your life expectancy? 95. <laughs> like, you should be out here with me. But you are. But your life expectancy for another three or four years maybe not so good. I'm going to give you a lot of money. Because I don't have to worry about you missing 32 years of payments. I don't have to worry about the housing market going down as fast over the next couple of years, hopefully. So we lend money based on age because we need to make sure that there's equity in the property to absorb any payment you're not going to make. Does that make sense? That's why we're so concerned about age. And we don't give any health checks yet, so that's good. So you can be really in poor health and get the same amount of money as someone with great health, right? Okay. That's great. I'm not the best at health right now. I'll be one of those people. I'm going to get money based on some of that playlist long term movie. I think that don't change my eating habits. I still get the same amount of money. I have to eat well. Okay. So, 73 year old power here. I was probably said, Ryan, I want a reverse mortgage to stay in my home. And I was probably like, well, this is how much money you're going to get. They're like, well, geez, that doesn't give me enough to pay off my mortgage. Or that doesn't give me enough to pay off my mortgage and get cash. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. The, the rules are the rules. Here's a different option. I don't know if you sell your home. I don't want to sell my home. Okay, well, then stay here. Let's do the options. Okay, well, that doesn't work. Okay, well, they're going to sell your home. Okay, what is the benefit for me to sell my home, right? Well, if you go into a lower priced home, that means that we have more equity to use because you're in a lower priced home and you're releasing some of that equity either through the loan or through cash in pocket. Just follow along here. This person says, I'm selling my home, and you as a realtor sell it for eight fifty. dollars They had a mortgage. Of course they did. That's why they were having a hard time. They called me because they didn't have a mortgage. So when they sold their home, you had to pay off a mortgage, and whatever the cost of selling the home were, they have $400,000 in cash now. And now they're turning back to you and say, okay, now I have 400,000 cash and I have no home. Before I didn't have any money, but at least I have a home. Now I have 400,000 and I need a home and I need to make sure that I can stay there the rest of my life. I also need to put some money in the bank and I don't know how about getting another mortgage. Oh, that sounds kind of tough. And then they do this to you. <laughs> do we love our clients? They say the house I want is 600,000. So now what you're telling me is that you only have 400. You need to keep cash in the bank. You worry about getting a loan, and you need to make sure that this group will be overhead the rest of your life. Okay? That's when you call your competitor. You go, I got a great client for you. I've already sold their house. I'll let you take it from here. No, we won't do that, right? Okay. Because <laughs> instead, you maybe call me, hopefully. And I say, look, based on your age of 73, here's what I'll do. I will ask you to put a down payment down for 259, and I will give you a loan for 341. So what have we done? We solved a couple problems already. They have 400,000, and I say, look, only give me 259. That means you were able to keep how much of the bank? Any mathematicians here? No? Okay, no. The client keeps 141 in the bank. 
because they only put down 259. I gave them a loan for 341. So if you take 341 plus the down payment, the, the 600,000 on all, and I've given them the ability to, what, we'll stay in the loan for the rest of their lives, right? It's a reverse purchase loan I've done for them. So even if they said, Ryan, I don't want to reverse mortgage, I'm going to make a payment, I'd say, I don't care. And then one day they don't, I'd say, I don't care. So that means I know that I feel good that we put them in a house where even if they don't make, can't afford to make a mortgage payment, they can stay there. That's nice to know. We put 141000 in the bank. How much do they have in the bank before they started this? Zero. I've also not asked them a whole bunch of pesky questions like regular loans. Like, oh, you want to have a 600 FICO score? That means you get a 3% higher rate than the guy with the 800 FICO score. What? Yeah. But wait a second. You only have Social Security income? That's not enough income to qualify for a $341,000 loan. Our underwriting requirements are totally different. That doesn't mean I, need, I don't need a little bit of income. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't underwrite. It just means we underwrite in a way that makes it so that our older homeowners who are usually living mostly off social security and making some money in the bank can actually get our loan. And if they've had some sicknesses and some problems and they've got to clutch, I, almost every critter for it was a, a medical clutch account. Those sneaky suckers, you paid your copay. The insurance company paid their half. And then the bill stuff comes later on. Does that happen to any of you? Just me? Dude, I get bills coming all the time. I'm like, dude, I pay for that. How many times I pay you guys? Well, I don't know, but if you don't pay attention to it, we're going to hit your credit report. This stuff happens in retirement. So we don't think that should hurt somebody to be able to get a loan. Yes? How can you arrive at 341K? Yes. How did I get that number? Yes. It's like an imaginary number, right? That's how much I like you. Imagine. Oh. We take the age. We have a chart. The chart changes, otherwise I'd give it to you all. The chart tells me based on age, what percentage I can lend of the value of the home. So I take the percentage, I multiply it by the value of the home, and that's how much of a loan I can give. Okay? Now the chart changes as interest rates change. That's why I don't just give you a hand out a chart and go, here's the chart. Because then it can change tomorrow. And then you call me like, Ryan, hey, I, I use that chart, I got a client, I'm like, it's different. I'm like, why would you do that to me? So we have percentages and charts. Does that make sense? You want to know how they come up with 341? It doesn't matter the selling price. It doesn't matter. Yes, good question. We don't care about the selling of the old home. Nothing to do with that. We're only looking at how much money you now have that you want to be able to put down and how old you are. So you, we don't care about the house you sold. That's done. We, the reverse has nothing to do with the sale house. Thank you for asking that question because I rarely ever answer it. And then I get questions on it. I think I put it in here. So back to our story here. Any other questions? Back to our story. This is happening more and more. This is getting more and more expensive out there. More and more expensive interest rates I mean it's harder for people to borrow the money to stay in their homes. I mean they have to like get to some of that equity to help them. And so this is what is out there. It's important. As you all know, just because I keep saying I can get people a loan to buy a home and they can't get any other loan, doesn't mean it's easy. Doesn't mean I kick my feet up on the desk and I'm like, bring the bell, there's another one. We're tedious when it comes to underwriting, which means I got to look at like their old payment history on their old taxes. I got to know about their home insurance and what I'm called. I got to know about a lot of stuff. It takes me a while. We have no automated systems is what I should be getting to. Like what I do and I used to do Regular forward mortgages, I have an automated underwriting system from Fannie Mae. I put their credit report in there, income, and it'll tell you, yes, they are approved. We have no systems like that for reverse mortgages. The system we have is in here, and it's very slow because it's in here. And I got to look at the credit reports, and I got to pull all these histories, and it takes a long time. So you would want to sell someone's home before we pre underwrite We've done that, right? Because sometimes it can take you two weeks to get an underwriting approval for them to buy, get a loan for the next home, right? So we don't want them to be out in the dark. So we want to pre underwrite them. It can take two weeks. What if somebody has horrible, nasty credit? They miss their mortgage payments. They, they don't pay their uh, tax histories on time. They don't have homeowners insurance here and there. Like that's scary for us. 
because we want to make sure that people keep insurance on their home and pay their taxes, right? So what happens if somebody has those horrible histories and their FICO score is a 400? What do we do? Okay, this is what we do. We will say, look, we will still give you a loan, but we want to pay your tax insurance for you so that way we know those won't be missed. And so how do we do that? We don't ask them to give it to us every month because we know that they are horrible and they can work the payments. So we collect it all up front. We ask you to put a bigger down payment down to cover the life expectancy of tax insurance payments. So the down payment goes up a lot. Or someone's refinancing and they have horrible credit and they can't explain why, and we're worried they're gonna keep on not making payments. We'll, we'll keep, and if they're gonna get a lot of cash out, we'll keep some more cash out in the house. We'll keep more equity in the house, and we'll take a little bit of equity each year to make the tax insurance payable. So if someone has horrible credit, even if their income maybe isn't working, we have ways to still figure out how to get them loans. It's just a matter of working with the bottom. And now I see why I say free underwriting is important. If somebody looks like they should qualify, maybe after a week of going through all their finances and everything, I'm like, I found a way to do it. That's what's very cool about our loans. You have these light bulb moments. You go through 100 pages of underwriting guidelines and you figure out a way to do it. Okay, if a client wants to get a reverse mortgage, whether they are buying a home or refinancing a home, we have to make sure that our industry is doing a good job of explaining it to them. They want to make sure we can tell them, hey, you don't have to make a payment because the government's paying for you. Don't think that hasn't been said before. Instead, we want them to know, hey, even though you're not making a payment, there's still interest that gets added on. Hey, if you don't pay your tax insurance, you get in trouble. Like, we want them to make sure that they understand how the loan works, and we have no idea who's doing these loans out there. So the government makes them call a nonprofit third-party agency who explains the loan to make sure that we are doing our job in the industry. And the client has to get that counseling done before they can get a loan back. I will give them a list. They will call through that list and get one. Okay? Not going to worry about these other bullet points here too much. When you write an offer, we do have some little EO secrecies, some things that we want to make sure are done with the purchase contract so that way you get accepted and we don't have to ask for addendums. So there's some things here there. When you, if you ever get to a point, obviously, where you have a client that's thinking about purchasing, hopefully we've gone through these things with you. What I do instead is we made a hotline just for realtors only. You guys can call this whenever you want, okay? You can call, uh, if you have money in pocket, you want dinner, you call that number, and I'll go out. That's it, it's easy. But the idea of the phone number is this. It's usually manned seven days a week, and somebody can answer questions about reverse mortgages. Why is that important? Because remember I said, if somebody is asking you a question about a reverse mortgage, that could be your client. And I don't want you to have to say, I don't know. I'm not a loan person. No, I don't want you ever to do that. I want you hopefully, first of all, be able to answer the initial question. Oh, it's just a loan that has a optional payment feature. Don't make a payment that goes out to the balance. Oh, that's how it works, that's how it works. And then maybe they'll ask you a question, like uh, when we get to this later on, maybe they say, well, uh, what happens if I keep the house in the trust and you don't remember? You're like, well, I don't remember the answer to that one. Okay, no problem, this is what you do. Oh man, I'll, you know, I'm gonna answer that question for you. I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. And then you get in the bathroom and you're like, hey, Ryan, can they put the house in the trust? And they're like, yes. Yeah, you can put the house in the trust. I want you to be able to answer questions for them. So that way they say your client, they don't go somewhere else for answers. Worst thing ever, right? Is to have a client go somewhere else and get an answer that you didn't give them. I don't want it to happen to you. So that's why we do that, that number there. It's for realtors only, okay? Don't put this on the bathroom wall somewhere and have a business like that because we actually answer this phone all the time. And we stay busy answering it. So this is for you all only, okay? All right, let's see. Where are we at? We're at 11 o'clock, maybe? Up there. Yeah, 10 minutes till. Okay, 10 minutes till 11. We got about an hour left. Uh, if you guys want to take a quick water break, something like that, bathroom, otherwise, I'll keep on going because I'll use every minute. So, trying to all the comments, anybody moving quickly towards the restroom? Yeah. Market growth and cheap acts. Would you believe we have older people in the USA? 
right? Of course we do. Back. We can't even get people to work jobs right now. Our big batch of employment and workers and whatever you want to call it, we're all getting older. So I don't have to tell you we have a lot of older people living in the USA. I also have to tell you that a majority of those are homeowners. And our younger kids are having a hard time even buying homes right now, right? So when we look at this information, it kind of starts pointing to some of the stuff I've already talked about. Number one, we have 10,000 people 30, 65 years old in the day. Uh, we have 105 million boomers that are ages about 58, I believe, to 76. Many boomers' parents are still doing great. So we probably have 150 million people that are ages 58 and older. A lot of them are homeowners, as you would imagine. A lot of them are in retirement, as you imagine, or the shortage of workers. Here's where the problems start to come. So as a nation, as every demographic, we don't say as much as we should. Whether it's a guy like me, my 40s, or somebody in the 30s, we're not saving enough money. No. But I'm not retiring tomorrow, so I'm not as worried about it. But if I'm a boomer and I'm 65 and I'm retiring, I'm like, oh no. I'm kind of low retirement savings. Even though I'm getting a whopping 1500 bucks a month Social Security, guess what? That went up, what, 4% this year? And inflation went up 8.6 last month? Those numbers don't work very well, do they? Fixed incomes are getting eaten alive right now by inflation. Oh my gosh. So you're going to retire. You're like, man, I just don't have that much to do. Guess what, boomers? I don't think it's your fault necessarily. Because when I got out of school, I went to go work for Prudential and I worked in the securities department. And I did it. My job was to help people that were retiring either roll their 401ks over or take their pension plans and invest it in, you know, a bunch of products, fixed products, well, you know, you know, it goes. And this is what I saw back then. So this is in 2000 and 2000, year 2000, was that the boomers, by and large, didn't have that much pension. Their parents did. The boomers had a little bit of 401ks. Their parents really did not. So there's a huge shift that happened, right? It started happening in the 70s when companies started saying, here's a 401k to supplement your retirement. And in the 80s, they said, that's your only retirement because you don't get pitched by anymore. And that happened pretty quick, okay? Because I'm here to tell you that even if you worked at JCPenney's or Sears in the 70s, you got a pension plan, okay? That was been great. Dude, I would have zero stress if all I did was sell hand tools and lawnmowers and I had a nice big pension. That would be great. That's gone. And Sears is bankrupt. So for a lot of our boomers, it just happened too fast for them to start this forward when they would start saving. They didn't get a lesson from their parents about saving. Nope. So here we are. A lot of our boomers are living off Social Security and they over half of them don't have any money in the bank. That's a bummer. And you're going to retire. What am I going to do? Well, I can tell you one thing now boomers are doing and working longer than anybody ever has. Okay, their parents pretty much retired at 62 years old on the dot. And now boomers are, living, are working to 69, 70 years old. So they have to work longer. Then about 69 or 70, they're like, I don't care. I'm just, I can't work anymore. I'm just done. The pandemic kind of spiced that up a little bit. A lot of people said I'm done. People who shouldn't, like 25 years old, they back to work. Okay. But when you're a boomer and you're like 60 something years old, the pandemic hits, you're like, you leave that behind, right? You know what's interesting for us in the reverse mortgage industry is the average age of people getting reverse mortgages are like 70. I don't know if there's any connection there. I'm just throwing it out there. But don't worry. Don't worry about our boomers or their parents or even some of my generation for that matter. Because even though we don't have enough money for retirement, we've got these houses with all this equity in it. But now we've got to figure out how do I take that equity and turn it into making my life easier in retirement. If I were to refinance my home and get cash out, I get a bigger mortgage payment. That doesn't work if I can even qualify. 
So maybe we well, that's not really going to work, especially because now we're even pausing them right now. Ah, geez, all this equity, no way to get to it. Not a lot of money in my bank. Remember, why do you think 55% of the people selling their homes are older? Because they've come against this wall. And they said, I don't want to live crappy and, and struggle with my payment. So I'm going to sell. That's why we see a lot of people getting reverse mortgages. More now than ever, I'm getting applications. More now than ever, I'm turning them down with the stupid inflation. But the point is that we're trying to get to that equity in one way or another because we need to to help our retirement. And we have almost uh, 8 trillion in equity, or 65 and older home loans. 8 trillion. Okay. You know where probably most of that equity is? I'm just going off the cuff here. I'd bet you say California, and maybe Manhattan, right? San Francisco, you know what costs are out there? LA, Orange County, expensive, right? So you guys are in a great area to be licensed. You guys should see more people selling to get to that equity. I don't know. People don't really sell their homes as much as we hope, though, right? We sell home shortages, even though prices are coming down. People figure out a way to do something. They, they need to get to that equity. Okay. And that's why we see more listings by older homeowners. All right. So let's talk about what happens to a reverse mortgage house in the future. Remember bullet point number three? I said there's a lot of homes with reverse mortgages in there. The government, re government reverse mortgage has been around since about 1990. Heck, I've been doing it for 15 years. There's a lot of homes with reverse mortgages on them. And if you did a reverse mortgage in 1990 and the youngest in age back then was 62, how many years is that? 30 years? 32 years? That means you're 94 years old right now. Your past life expectancy. So in other words, we have a lot of people with reverse mortgages that are meet the major. And I can tell you that most of those heirs have no idea how it works to get the house. Into their name. So just like a regular loan, remember I said this is all like a regular loan. When a person with a reverse mortgage house dies, the heirs inherit it. But how do you inherit it? And there's opportunity for you all in this. Because you can help them to make sure that they get that house with less fanfare than if they didn't know anything. And since I say that from my experience at our office, most of the heirs that get the house when it has a reverse mortgage sell it. You want to be there to make sure you get that house for your listing. So, number one, by the way, easy to get a list of house with reverse mortgages. Any title company can get it. In fact, I'm going to show you software. I'll give you logins where to get it. Not that hard. So, now you know where every house with reverse mortgage is in your area. And you know there's a probably going to come for sale sooner than later. And now you just have to know how you're going to get those people to listen to you. I'll table that conversation for a second. Let's learn about how a reverse mortgage behaves when a borrower passes away. Number one, you have two situations when a house is uh, passed on to the air. Either it has equity or it doesn't. If it has equity, in other words, the balance on the reverse mortgage is less than what the house is worth. That's pretty easy. That's like a regular loan. The heirs can simply say, we want to keep the house, we'll refinance and give the lender back whatever they're owed. And we give her that lien. That's like a normal loan situation. Or the heirs put the house in the market, escrow orders a payoff demand from their first mortgage servicer, and they sell the house and the heirs get the difference, right? Simplifying it anyways. So it's basically it's, it's, it's like a regular loan at this point in time. If someone has a first mortgage house and the heirs want to do something with it, the rules are basically the same as if it had a regular loan on it. The FHA, the lender, the investor, nobody wants this house. They're like, heirs, step up and get this house. But they'll even give the heirs up to a year to do this <coughs> because they definitely want the heirs to get the house. Because otherwise, if nobody shows up and raises their hands to say we want the house, then the lender has to foreclose. It's not their house. And then they got to go through foreclosure, notice a default, notice a sale, go to auction. <clears throat> what a nightmare. And they usually lose money. So they don't want that situation. They want the heirs to have the house. So, first example is very much normal, like if they had a regular loan. And don't even get 
to a year to do that. I'll tell you how to get that here in a second because it doesn't come automatically. Let's look at the second situation. The house is underwater. They have lived a long time or they didn't, uh, the, the economy is down, recession, something, and this house is upside down. So they actually, when they pass away, the balance on the reverse mortgage is 750. And we find out with an appraisal that the house is only worth 700. So the heirs now say, oh, it's upside down. We don't want this thing. Well, you have a choice. The first one would be this. The lender is going to do the appraisal. They'll figure out the house is worth 700. You have a statement. You know that your parents or your uncle, whoever owned the house related to, owed 750. If it's an FHA change reverse, and we call it a HECM, then what they'll do, the lender, investor, or whoever has control of the loan will say, look, we will give you the house below what is owed. We will take 95% of fair market value. In this case, 95% of 700 is equal to 665. And they'll say, just refinance and get a 665, and we will pay the difference of what was owed. So 665 minus 750 means they're coughing up about 85,000 bucks to the lender. FHA is to make up the difference. So with a government insured reverse mortgage, an heir really never has to inherit an upside down home because FHA will wipe out the upside down part plus give you a 5% jigger in equity. But the heirs got to know how to get this done before you're going to own Now, maybe the heirs just say, I don't want to do anything. I don't want the house. Even if I get it at a discount and all that junk, I'm just too lazy. I don't care. A lot of heirs out there like that. They'll just let the thing go. Okay, well, it's got to go to foreclosure. It's got to go through the auction. It's got to go all that stuff. And nobody ever, no one ever says to you, you have an issue here because it's an FHA insured loan. So FHA is paying the losses to the lender. So nobody cares if you don't show up in the house. Nobody cares about anything. Now, maybe you don't want the house here. Maybe the year is like, ah, I really want to see get foreclosed on. And maybe you're friends with them. So you can short sell the thing, you make your commission, and you do whatever you want with the commission, right? It's a short sell. So those are the two things that happen, or those are the two ways a house is taken care of when the borrowers pass away. The heirs all along the way have the choices, and they get up to a year to make these choices. So they never have to say, I didn't know, the house got foreclosed on, something happened, the lender took it. That's because you must not have done anything, because that's not protocol. So let's go into this. You as an agent need to know that a lot of times heirs aren't going to know what's going on. And as a matter of fact, many times these houses don't end up in a trust or only the borrowers are on title. So the heirs end up in probate. You don't want to be in probate on a reverse mortgage home because the investor is like, man, no one's making payments on this thing. I need to get this thing disposition as quick as I can. And for, they, they can sell it. They, they can set it to foreclosure. This is how we help the heirs. Number one, you help the heirs. This is how you can listen. Number one, whenever a reverse mortgage home is ha it has the original borrowers on title and no one else on title, they may not even talk to the heirs. Because in order for the reverse mortgage servicing company to be able to talk to the heirs, they need to have prior author written authorization from the borrowers. So if there's no authorization on file and so they pass away, the heirs call them and say, hey, we want to do something with the house. And you're like, who are you? Oh, I'm the, I'm the son. I'm the nephew. Oh, well, we've never heard you before. And we don't see that you're a trustee of the trust, I think. So we simply won't talk to anybody. Thank you. And they hang up the phone. And they can be really rude. It really makes you mad because now you've got your parents or your relatives' house in probate, in foreclosure, and they wouldn't talk to you. Uh -huh. I get this call all the time. So now I'm going to let you know. Anytime you run across a reverse mortgage home, I want you to do these steps to make sure you get a big list of these. The first thing you want to do, you can even go out and search and find reverse mortgage homes and write a letter and say, I know how to make sure your heirs can get in the house, something like that. I don't know if I put a guarantee on it, but 
Let me just. The first thing I want to do is say, hey, do you know if your property you want to control the house has been approved at the lender to do this? I don't know. Oh, well, let's do an authorization form. Let's send it in. We get it notarized. We'll call the servicer afterwards. And we'll make sure the servicer will talk to your next of kin or your kids or whatever when something happens to you. That's the first way we're going to help you. Oh, wow. Okay. So you do that. Immediately, you've helped them go from a house that might go into probate that no one will talk to to a house that the service will call and talk to this person. The person can say, oh, we weren't going to trust, but we're going through probate. Here's the probate paperwork. Please don't foreclose right away. Because what the lender does when someone passes away, the first thing they do is they send out a letter. They say, you have 30 days to get back to us. If you don't get back to us in 30 days, we're going to start foreclosure. Well, heck, you can't get it through probate 30 days. And if they can't talk to you to know it's a probate, they're just going to start foreclosing after 30 days. So at least if they'll talk to somebody, you can say, look, we have an attorney, we're going through probate, and they'll listen to you and they'll say, okay, send us a paperwork. At least you got somebody that'll listen to you, which is like worth a lot. That's the first thing I would do. And then by the way, make sure the heirs know that you're the one that made this happen for them when they have your card and that you're the reverse mortgage real estate agent that will help them. That's how you're going to make sure you get a whole lot first. Next thing, let's say that, well, of course you should tell the people maybe you want to think about a trust. You don't have to spend a lot of money on trust nowadays, and that will stop probate from happening. But what if a client had a trust and they put the house in the trust after they had a reverse mortgage already? So here they are thinking the house in a trust. I'm the successor trustee. When something happens to them, I step in, I'll call the reverse mortgage company, and we're going to be good. Okay? This stuff happens because I have to help people out of this mess. You call up the servicing company. You say, did you know my mom and dad passed away? Well, yes, we did. Oh, I got your letter. Who are you? Oh, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm their son. Really? We don't have authorization to talk to you. Oh, I know with the house and the trust. Oh, when you did the loan on the house, you did not put the house in the trust. So you have violated the terms of the note, which is you will not change the title without our approval. So we still won't talk to you. Wait a second, I'm the trustee of the trust, it's not going through probate, but you still won't talk to me. Right. Here we go. You guys send the trust in. They need to look through the trust. What if they don't like the wording of the trust? They can do that. What a mess. So as a real estate agent, I would say, I want to make sure your heirs can get the house if something happens to you. You have a letter on file that says you can talk to them. Oh, you do good. You have your house in the trust. I do. Do they know your house in the trust? I don't know. What did you do the trust before or after the reverse? After. Uh oh, you still may not be in the clear. They're in a peculiar predicament now. Because what if they call the service? Now you should probably call the servicer and should tell the servicer. They should have think about putting my house in trust. You have to pay with that. Send it in, we'll approve it. Send it in, they'll approve it, you're okay. What if you send it in, they don't approve it. And your house is that trust. Gotta get it fixed. Most trusts get approved if they're approval trusts. Could you sell it and then go back and get a reverse mortgage with the trust? Sell the house. Could, could you pay it off, pay off the loan? Yeah. Okay. And now we don't have a reverse mortgage. Put the house in the trust and then go back and get it reverse. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go through all that. You're saying your question is well, if we put it in a trust, we're not supposed to. Now the letters are mad at us. How about we pay the loan off, go get a trust, and get a new loan? Oh, no, that would, I, I wouldn't make it to that transaction. Okay, myself, I do it for a living. I would get a whole service and go, we really want to put our house in a trust, will you review it for us? If they find out it's in a trust, well, you know, hopefully the trust meets the requirements, or you can fix trust in the requirements. That's what I would do. But there's no guarantee that I'm going to give them a hard time. But you know, you're probably going to get a hard time when you go to, uh, when you pass away and they look in the house in the trust and they didn't authorize it. So you're kind of in a little bit of a hot water anyways. But that's why you want to tell your clients, oh, no, the house is not in a trust. We'll put it in a trust. Oh, before you do that, call the servicer. Say you want to put the house in a trust. Send it in there. They will send something back that says, we authorize you to put the house in the trust. Now I'll put the house in a trust. Take your business card. Staple it inside. That's what I do. I put it right in there in the, for in the trust folder. Why? Because when something happens to people and they pass away, the kids immediately go find the trust. Why? Because they're greedy, they want to know who gets the house. Okay, maybe they love their parents so. 
but they still are concerned about what's happening with the estate. They want to go to the trust. Your business card is stapled in there. And when this happens, I'm a realtor and I want to make sure you can get the house in your name as an heir. What happens if they change the trust in years? I mean, that's that is pretty funky. You change the house, you put the house in the trust, like, and you got it approved, and then you change it later on. Well, we, the county really doesn't know that because they don't record amendments usually. So we let the lenders kind of in the dark. So it's kind of like, are you probably okay? Did you change the trust that the lender wouldn't like? Maybe. Maybe that'll come out the wash when you actually. I really don't get too many problems like that. The okay. problems I get are we put the trust, we put the house in the trust after the verse, now the servicer will talk to us. Why? I've had attorneys die in the meantime and they had to rewrite the trust. I get attorneys passing away all the time because usually when you're, you're usually going to see an attorney that's probably the same age as you. <laughs> and then you passed away and these attorneys passed away and all the documentation is in a file folder somewhere. I don't know what that means. Get a younger attorney? <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's not very fair. I don't know. Here's what I tell everybody. When, by the way, every time, uh, when I, if you have one copy of your trust, and then somebody uses it to open a bank account, and somebody uses it to get a loan, and by the time you have your trust, usually when you pass away, it's torn, there's pages missing, it's costly, stains on it, right? I tell everybody, look, make a couple copies of your trust, put it in a safe somewhere, where, by the way, not just you have act, we want to make sure that people know. I would keep a copy myself. I would have a copy that the family uses. Copies, 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 okay? That way it just doesn't disappear. Okay? You have seen it all. Right. My parents just passed away, and I'm the, uh, I was 80% I was, uh, beneficiary. And this situation, I think, I was 20, like years ago. I was like, okay, and they're like, but. When I got the trust, there's some pages missing. What pages are missing? I looked through it and I'm like, hey, that's interesting. The beneficiary pages are missing. Who is your other sibling? My brother. Where's he at? He's in jail on gun charges. And he says that he's 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 the beneficiary. Oh, where are we going with this? Probate court. That's why I say keep multiple copies. That stuff happens. Siblings go after each other. Okay, we got off track a little bit. But that, that's the stuff we see all the time. So I want you to know whoever has a reverse mortgage that you can help them. They've already got their reverse mortgage. I want you to let them know that you're an agent that wants to make sure that you can the heirs are going to inherit the house properly and that things haven't been done wrong. And then I want you to also make sure that your card isn't in the file with the trust so that you're the first person I call when they're trying to figure out what am I going to do with this house? That makes sense? Okay, a lot of reverse mortgage house out there. There's opportunity out there for this stuff. How do I know? Because I'm brilliant? Heck no. It's because I've had a lot of agents call in with their clients going, right, I've got a client, their parents passed away, and they got problems. And I'm like, finally, like after a year or two years of getting this, I was like, man, what if an agent just went ahead and planted their seed and fixed all this? I have my cards in a lot of trust. So it's a lot of trust. I put my cards in there. It falls from the ears. I'm not selling a home, but... I like to still be involved in the transaction somehow. So I get a hold of the original agent. Maybe they need a loan. I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do there. Okay. Let's check it out here. What do we learn today? Does the government remain on the home? We're just a loan, right? We are not either taking the home, giving the, we're not doing anything. We're just loaning money. Okay. We're just giving, making the payment optional. That's all we're really doing. The heirs, yes, the heirs can still get the house. We learned about that in the last slide. I want you to plant your seed everywhere to make sure that the heirs will you when this day comes. That's it. I want you to be the agent. I want you to find every first mortgage you can. And even if you don't remember anything from the class, come on. Say, right, I found a person the first mortgage. How can I make sure I end up getting solicited? Oh, okay, here we go. Let's do this, this, and this. That's brilliant. I love that stuff. What are you missing? Will the heirs lose future appreciation? Well, whatever equity is in the house when the bars pass away, that goes to the estate. 
as the lender, as the reverse mortgage company, as the FHA, HUD, government, whoever people have always said want the house, they don't want the house. They do awful with these houses when they if they have to foreclose. They want the heirs to show up. That's why they give the heirs a year and they say whatever equity is in there when you sell the house or refinance, that's yours, it's not ours. If the house is up underwater, I can no longer live there. Remember, that's one of the biggest deals about these loans. Okay. And we can say interest rates are higher in these loans, or you, if you miss payments, your interest is compounding. You can say all these things about these loans that I've heard. And I just have one thing I just say to people. I'm like, you know what? If nothing else, if everything goes wrong, you've got a roof over your head. No matter how long you live, we won't ask you to make that mortgage payment. If you live 30 years and you miss 360 payments, you're going to have a pretty good size mortgage. I can tell you that. You're going to have a big mortgage on that thing. But that was your choice every month not to make a payment, which is up to you. But at least no matter what the mortgage balance is, you know that you made it through all the stuff that happened with the economy, inflation, all that stuff with your house. So, yes, you can stay there even if the house ends up upside down. The loan is not a 30 year fix, it's not a 10 year fix, it's not, it, it's not any of those things that's where your life at. The loan lasts as long as you live. So, give them a run for their money. If you had any reason to live to be 120, it's because you have a reverse mortgage. And you want to get every penny you can out of the guys. <laughs> the heirs that are uh, qualified as far as age is concerned, can they do a substitute of borrower? Oh, that's a good question. You're uh you're you're on the right path and then you veer off. So let's say that the borrowers have passed away and the heirs are of appropriate age to get their own reverse mortgage. We can't substitute, we refinance. You have to redo it. Right, but we got then we got to know the numbers for it, right? How old are you? How much equity is in the home? Will you qualify based on that? And it does work. Every once in a while, I refinance a error their parents have died from their parents' reverse mortgage to their own. It can happen. I'm going to say more times than not, they sell. So there you go. And that's for your benefit. Right? They want to sell the house. Here's how you mess up a reverse mortgage. Can you get foreclosed on with a reverse mortgage? Yes. Have I heard about it? Yes. Do I get yelled at? Sometimes. It's not my fault, though, because here's what happened if you get foreclosed on with the reverse mortgage. Number one, if you get a reverse mortgage, you sign something that says this will be my primary residence. It doesn't mean you have to be there every day. It doesn't mean you can't go on vacation. It just means that you're not buying another house and going to living there and let someone else live in the house with the reverse mortgage on it. Can you have more than one house and have a reverse mortgage on a house? Yes. I don't care how many homes you own. Just as long as the one you're calling your primary residence is the one with the reverse mortgage. Can you rent rooms out? Sure. Can you make it into a hostel? No. Can you make it an Airbnb? No. The house is not supposed to be for business purposes, but if you rent out rooms to your friend, you don't care. Get an AD in the back and rent that thing out, that's cool. Sounds like a money maker to me. If you live in a four unit property, you rent out three and live in one, that sounds great. <laughs> But it's your primary <laughs> residence. What happens if I get sick and I go to the hospital? I don't care if you're sick. Well, I do care if you're sick. <laughs> oh, so very bad. I don't care if you go away and you've got to be gone for 12 months. It's fine. If you're coming up at the end of month 12, somebody needs to get you back home. And then that way we can call the servicer and say, Did you know I was gone? They might say, I didn't know. They might say, We didn't know. And you say, Well, I'm back again. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Will you verify I'm here? Yeah, we'll verify you're here. Good, because then I need to go back to my nursing home for another 12 months. You can do that. They want you back there to make sure you're coming back once a year. Why? Because you got to remember, we have a house that you're not making payments on. And that's the only way we have to get our money back. We want to make sure you're going back to make sure the pipe hasn't been running for the last 12 months. Like, we need to make sure the house continues to be maintained. So we have a chance of getting our money back. So you can be gone for five years. You just can't do it in a row. All right. You've got to pay your tax insurance. This is much like a regular loan. But I will tell you. What's that? Yes. You have to call the mortgager and say, come and check on you in the area. I would. I, I would call and say, I just want to make sure everything's cool as well. I don't know if I'd call and say, dude, did you know I'm gone for a year? <laughs> I don't know if I'd do that. I'd call them up. I'd just say, look. Because how we know is we send out something once a year. It's called an occupancy certificate. 
And you're checking them, saying, yes, I've lived here, I lived here. And then we're saying, okay, we believe you. But, right, but, I, so maybe we don't even know you're gone. But I would call up and say, hey, I just want to make sure that you've got my last occupancy, sir, that I'm all good with residency things. And most of the time they're going to say, yeah, we didn't know you were gone. They'll call up and be like, dude, I've been gone 368 days. You guys didn't catch it. Seems silly, right? Who knows? Okay. Uh, where was I? At? Oh, I was moving on. That's okay. That's your question. Uh, so you got to pay your tax insurance. Well, it's like a regular loan. You got to do that too. But we're a lot more aggressive. If you miss a tax payment, we're probably going to be on your butt a lot sooner than a regular loan. Why? Because we don't have any way of collecting monthly tax insurance from you. Like if you if you fall behind on taxes and insurance on a regular loan, like a Fannie Mae, they'll throw an impound account on there. They'll jack your mortgage payment up. But we're not collecting the mortgage payment. So if you fall behind on taxes, we're like, oh no, this thing can move along quickly. So we're on people pretty quickly when the tax insurance is missed. And believe me, I've, I've had clients call and say, right, I just missed one payment. I already got a letter. I'm like, I know. I got to keep those taxes paid. Same thing with insurance. Uh, HOA use. We can't have a new kind of Okay, we can have a new kind of account. Okay, so we rewind it. Remember I said that somebody was really bad credit for an income account to pay tax return for you? But we, but we need more money equity to do that. Or if you're buying a house, we need to take it down. Amen. So if you said, Ryan, I do want my tax insurance paid, since we have no formal way of collecting money from you every month, we ask that you have a lifespan of tax insurance sitting as equity in the home. Which means you either got to put it in. So a lot of people are like, I don't want to do that. I want to keep, I want, I want that money in my pocket, my bank account, not sitting in equity. So they're not super popular. But yes, you could. Some people say, right, I have enough equity. Or I'm putting a big down payment down this house. Can you start that? It's called a lease up. We don't call it an income account. We call it an LESA, which is a life expectancy set aside. And then we pay the tax insurance. Guess what? It's not forever, though. Life expectancy. So if you live longer than your life expectancy, you may have to start paying your tax insurance again. You're going to be aware. Uh, put money in an account. Okay. All right. Your questions. Uh, next. This is how you lose a house and get more clothes on. If the house got in really bad shape and somehow we found out about it, like maybe that pesky neighbor. I don't know. Does everybody have perfect neighbors in there? Anybody get along with their neighbors? Every one of them? Maybe some people do. You do? Everybody like they're one of your neighbors? They like you. It's not my street. And maybe they find out I have a reverse mortgage and they see I have a broken window or there's a shingle missing. The roof doesn't leak, but I got a shingle missing. And they know I have a reverse mortgage. They might send a letter into every reverse mortgage company there is and say, if you have a reverse mortgage on this address, they're going to see a shingle. <laughs> and then I get a letter. You can say, you have to maintain your house. If you don't fix that shingle, you will be in foreclosure. Maybe the city has put a violation on me. Maybe I keep all my cars on the grass and they're leaving oil and they're a nuisance. I might get a letter. Because the city has put a violation and the worst mortgage company looks for those violations. I don't know all the ways they figure out that a house is not maintained. Truthfully, because it just doesn't happen often to me. I don't know, 15 years, I think I had one client that got a letter for the house not being maintained. And then you got to fix it. There is a list of items on the FHA website that you have to do to be considered minimum standards. It's mostly things like not have windows broken, not have shingles missing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, proper ingress and egress from the house, et cetera. But it's pretty tough to fill that rule, but I want to see that on the phone call. These are the three ways you get foreclosed on a reverse mortgage. I don't want it to happen to any of my clients. It really doesn't happen, as far as I know, because I hear from them right away and get the problem solved. But some people don't have, some people don't know the reverse mortgage company was that did it. They're not realizing that they're getting, that they, uh, the tax payment is off. They're not realizing something's going on. And they can get more clothes on. For every age, it's different loan about, right? Yes, remember that? Okay, remember I discriminate? Yes, <laughs> can't go exception, say that, right? That's going to go back and bite. I'm going to take that little snippet, right? Based on age, yes. But what happened if the, the face value of your uh, house go down? Would that affect your reverse mortgage? 
Okay, so you've got your reverse mortgage and property values are dropping. What if they drop 30% and you're not making any payments? Could you ever put yourself in a position where you have to get a different loan or your loan gets called due or you have to make a payment? Something like that. Yes, and the answer is no. Okay. So for anybody, this is uh, maybe 2000 and uh, well, this was, I got a call from someone and they said, I want to sell my house. I have a risk mortgage. I'm like, okay, how much do you owe? How much out? I looked at how much they owed. And I'm like, you're pretty much upside down right now from the crash we have. I said, why do you want to move? You're, you have no payment. You didn't live the rest of your life. If you sell the house, you won't get any money for the house. Please don't sell. Don't move. I don't know why they wanted to move. I never followed up with them. But after I told them, you don't have to worry about that. I think that maybe they're concerned that day was coming. But that's the deal that the investors at FHA makes with everybody. Once you do a reverse mortgage, you get to stay there even if all these things go wrong. Okay. Um, okay, so older you are, the more money I give you. The younger you are, the less money I give you. We went through that already. You put the age. Oh, man, am I going for it? Because every age is different loan amount, and it's also based on different purchase prices, etc. I don't remember what the formula is because it changes. The, the chart changes. It changed last week. If I had the uh, chart memorized, I'd be in trouble. So I use a computer. I have a program, but you guys don't have my computer. So we built an app for you guys in case you're ever interested in how much somebody can get on a reverse mortgage at any given time. We do update the app, okay? So you always want to make sure you have our updated app because you need to know. So you download that app onto your phone. You go to your Google Play Store. You go to your iPhone App Store. Are there any other kind of phones out there anymore? No, right? Google, Android, or iPhones. Okay. So you download those on your phone. It's an app. You go to your App Store. When you open up the app, It'll ask you for the purchase price. It'll ask you for the age of the borrowers. You put that in there, you hit calculate, and it'll tell you what the down payment needs to be. Now you may say, right, I don't want to know for purchase. I want to see if somebody's going to get a refinance. I said, okay, use the same app. Purchase price actually means home value. Put the value of the home in there, put their ages, hit calculate. When it tells you the down payment, ignore that. And the line below that will tell you the loan amount they'll get. Now, if we're very concerned about ages, first thing we want to figure out, if we have two people that are married and one is younger than the other, whose age do you think we're going to base the loan on? Like this. Because they're going to live a long time. We've got to make sure that they can stay in the house and we won't go upside down. What if you're not married and you want to get a reverse mortgage with somebody? You can do that? Sure. I don't care who you reverse mortgage with. You, can, you guys can do it together right here. Third and fourth row. Reverse mortgage. How about all three of you? Sure. Take all of you on an application. But I don't think you guys are married to each other, right? Okay. When you're not married and you want to do a government insured reverse mortgage, you all have to be over 62. Okay? If you are married, we will take one person over 62 and the youngest can be 18 or whatever the legal age for marriage is that's Okay? So we pay attention to age, we pay attention to whether you're married or not. Now we have a non-government reverse mortgage these days, non-FHA. This would not be called a HECOM, which is what we talked about earlier. If you have one of these and you want to do that, you can get a loan as long as you're 55 or older. And now we don't care if you're married, we just say you all got to be over 55 if you want to be on this non government reverse mortgage. I will tell you the non government reverse mortgage lends quite a bit less money than the government. So that's why we usually look to the government sure reverse mortgage first and the non government loan second because people usually want the most money they can get. The interest rates on the government insured reverse are actually much better than the non government. That's another reason for that. What's an interest rate on a reverse mortgage on an FHA government insured reverse mortgage? Our fixed rate loans right now are about 5.6. Wow. 
5.7. That's the same as what a regular Fannie Mae loan is. That's pretty good. We have mortgage insurance, which means we have a half a percent annual that's added. So that makes our rates really about 5. Point, uh, about 6%. Still pretty good. That's what regular loans are. Good question. A regular FHA loan, sometimes you right, you'll go to get that removed because what? You're making payments, the house is more valuable. On a reverse mortgage, you can never remove that. And it's because you're not forced to make the payment, your balance is going up. So therefore, we are actually predicting you might have less equity in the future. On a reverse mortgage, you're probably going to start out with more equity than a regular loan. And then over time, your balance will go up. On a regular loan, you start making payments, your balance goes down. So therefore, we cannot remove the FHA insurance on a reverse mortgage ever, because we don't know when it might ever be upside down or not, or if it will. The risk always. Okay, so those are the rates. We have a fixed and a adjustable. Uh, I you can't hold me anything in the last six months because it's been absolutely crazy. But prior to that, a majority of the reverse mortgages that were done were adjustable. And that was a lot because people could get more money. They could also get an equity line of credit with an adjustable reverse mortgage, which gave them more flexibility in how they got their money out of the house. The fixed rates are more rigid, and sometimes it didn't work as well, believe it or not. So even though someone's taking a adjustable rate and say, ah, I don't really care about the rate adjusting because if it goes up, I don't have to make a payment, so it'll never put me in a bad situation. Um, and it gives me more flexibility, which is what I need. So I'll take the adjustment. Even though they may have been a fixed rate person their whole life, I have a fixed rate loan on my house right now. Great rate, I love it. When I'm in my 60s and I get a reverse, I'd probably do adjustable and kiss that low rate goodbye. Because I understand that the adjustable gives me flexibility and sometimes more cash than the fixed rate, which is usually why I'm doing a reverse retirement. I'm usually not doing a reverse retirement because I want to try to lower my interest rate. It's usually because I'm trying to make cash available for myself and also not be strong and tied to a payment. So it's different, right? Different reasons why you different loans. Okay, going back to our chart. So we know that if you're married, you got to pay attention on a government true reverse. If you're not married, you all need to be 55 or older. We know we have a government true reverse mortgage. We know we have a non-government true reverse mortgage. The government true reverse mortgage, if a house is worth more than 970, 800, you see that number up there? The government's like, we're not going to give you any more money. That's a pretty expensive home. Even if your house is worth more, we're going to give you the same amount as if it was worth 970. So we're starting to put a cap basically in our loan amounts when your house starts to be worth more than 970. The non-government loan, this is where it starts to come in handy, because the non-government loan says, we don't care. If your house is worth 6 million, we're going to lend you money based on 6 million. So if a house is usually over like 1.1 million, then we'll probably start looking at the non-government reverse to get you more cash. Paying quite a bit higher interest rate, but some people don't care. They're like, I want money. So we just have different products in different situations. And if you hear something that's a non government loan, just tell it one other, or call it other, because there's a bunch of different names for them. They just keep in giving them new names. I don't even remember all the names of them now. Just call it something other than a government church. So for non government reverse mortgage, it's just higher LTV. Uh, yes and no. I would say you're talking about getting more money if the house is worth by more than 1.1 million. The LTV is still lower than the government, but the fact that they're willing to let it based on a higher value, they're going to get more money. That makes sense. And what is the LTV for government? Okay, so remember it's different for every age. Okay, I'm going to give you a range. I'll give you a range. Okay, uh, let's see, because every age is different. If you're 62 on a government share reverse, nowadays you're probably getting about 45% of the value of it. If you're like 90, you're probably getting like 70% of the value of it. We just had a total review of the non-government loans, like as of like today and Friday. They completely changed everything on us. Let's take a wild guess. If you're 55 years old on a non-government reverse, you're probably getting 35% of the value. Okay. All right. So that's more than 70%. Yeah. 
if you're yeah, you know, if you're older, you're probably going to max out at seventy percent of value. That's a good question. So we use like uh, something like life insurance expectancy tables, and have they changed? I'm sure they have. What are we doing about that? Just don't know. I don't know if we change our tables. That's a great question. Yeah, um, I'm sure we will. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's the calculator app. You download it on your phone. You just keep it there and you run across somebody one day and talk about reverse mortgage and you can be like instant loan officer. You can be like, here, check this thing out. Let's see if you can get a reverse mortgage. And they made go 450 and when you use the app, it says they go into 400. You know what you do to save them? An hour of some kind of sales guy on the phone trying to figure out if they can qualify. And all he wants to do is get their information and try to call them for years after. They better come on those guys sometimes. <laughs> I don't like when they do it to me. <laughs> so you can literally tell it right there. It doesn't look like the, the according to these guys right here, it doesn't look like it might not qualify right now. They made you fast forward them on the track. And then what you do is you, you pull the listing contract right out of your pocket and then you put their house on the market right there on the spot. See how that works? Calculator app, you don't qualify, listing. That would never happen. No, never you try it. You guys ever carry a plain listing contract with you? Not anymore. Not anymore, but you used to? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Did you ever get one? Absolutely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you heard it here first. You guys should start carrying a listing contract with you. She used to get it on the spot. We used to have listing contracts and sales contracts in our phone bill. Awesome. I love that. Okay. All right. What else we got? I think that's it for the slide. Where are we at? 11.39. Doing good today. Okay, before I move on to this next stuff, which is not necessarily reverse warning related, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have any questions in the chat or in the uh, question room? I totally ignored that today, by the way. Maritza? I don't see any questions in the chat, um, so you can go ahead and um, continue with class. Okay, no questions. Can hire me, uh, military and hire me? Yeah, so anybody can benefit. Like, and sometimes they get that question, so they're like, Ryan, right, what's the VA reverse mortgage look like? It's the same. So you're not getting anything extra special, unfortunately, for being anybody. Everyone's just the same person to us. I literally, I don't even know what, I, I ask age. I don't even know, like, I ask so fast. Like, I don't even know that I'm just asking ages like that. It's only a very bad uh, sales tactic, right? From an expert like you. But I don't care who they are. I can know how much they own their house, how much it's worth, and what their ages. And those are my three things. Um, so, like keeping a sales contract in your trunk, um, just makes you think of all the ways that you can do business faster. Now I'm thinking about what you think. Okay. I give a lot of stuff and information to class. And, and the problem with that is that when you guys leave, you maybe how much you're going to retain you think? 30%? Give, give me your most dire prediction of what you remember from today. Anybody? I won't insult you. 20%? Mel, how much do you remember after today? 50. No, no. Only because you this class like four times. <laughs> okay. So. But I want you all to be able to actually take and get something from today, like a client or something, right? That would be why you took this class. Well, maybe to educate yourself, yes, but also to kind of help your business, right? And I know that trying to take this stuff and put it in some other way that's going to work for you, I, that's, that's just sounds exhausting for me. But I want you to be able to take advantage of it right away. So here's a couple ideas for you. Number one, I've made something very easy. Let's say that you happen to know somebody that maybe asked you a question about a reverse mortgage. Maybe you know of somebody on your street that the house is not looking great, they're kind of older, and you're thinking, God, that person might be the one that lists themselves. How do I take what Ryan just did and do something about that? Okay. So we made a website, we have a bunch of websites for you all. They're all just, you hop on there, just free stuff. 
gocortum.com. It's about as easy I can get for you. G O C O U R T E M.com. It's on the blue screen. If you think, gosh, I know somebody that might be thinking about selling their house, but how am I going to do this? Don't do it. Don't do anything. Go to gocortum.com, put their name and address in there. You only know those two things. I will take that and I will drop a newsletter to them for you. That basically doesn't say, hey, here's how reverse purchase works, because that's going to go in the garbage can. But instead, what we've done is over the last uh, 10 years of doing reverse purchase loans, I sample what the clients were thinking or asking prior to listing, and then we wrote some newsletters for you that answers the questions that they sometimes ask when they're going to go list, like, what's Prop 19 look like? That's different than Prop 13. What does capital gains look like? Maybe I should stay at home and just use a hero to fix my house up. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Maybe I think I've, I've heard, have you guys heard and got the mail, the cash offers? <laughs> you know that makes up a pretty good percentage of homes being sold right now is a cash offer thing? Then they turn around and get a mortgage. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you think people that are getting the cash offers to sell a home are they getting top dollar? They can't because the investors will lose money. But you think that they really know that because the investors sure pay it differently? Well, older clients want to know about that. Maybe I should take this cash offer. So, what we did is we wrote, we wrote a newsletter. We'll send it out. We'll send it out for six months, not to your entire database because I'm a little world. I don't have a lot of money to start out with. But, I, but if you have like three or four clients, you're like, man, I think this is that person that I was talking about. Just go on that website, put their name and address. That's the only two things we know. We'll mail the newsletter, but it has your name on it. That talks about these things. And don't worry, like, they're calling you to ask about Prop 19. You're like, oh, crap, I don't want to do about this. I just send a newsletter. I put on there a 24 hour information. And then when they call in, you know what I do? I grab their information. This is legal. And then I call you. Because I know who they are and I know you put them in and it somebody like, hey, this uh, Fred guy just, oh, did you know Fred guy? I don't know, I put him in there. Well, he wants some information. Give it a shot. I'm doing that for free, just for fun. I just want to see what happens if you go out there and have some fun. Because it's fun for me to see if it works. So go, maybe you have their email address. I'll deliver the same thing to them from email. Email, I can do a lot more of. It doesn't cost me very little to do email. Mail, it's going to cost me like a couple bucks, plus the material. Email costs me like cents. So if you have a, a list of older homeowners, how about this? Maybe you don't have any older homeowners, right? Right? You don't know anybody that's old, right? Because you're pretty young. What are you? 30? Oh, boy. You don't know anybody that's older. <laughs> I don't got that. Oh, you look young. <laughs> okay. How about your friend's parents? But if you do know those older people, get them in, give us all their emails, and we'll email them the newsletter for you. And then maybe you get a hit. It sounds like fun. It should be very easy. I don't want you to have to take what I just did today and regurgitate it by any stretch of imagination. But I just want you to know who's older when you leave here today. Really? Okay? And let's see if we can't make a connection for you guys. Why not? Now, that's go quarter. And then it emails you when people respond, by the way, which is cool. So have some fun with that. I built this specifically for you guys. It's done nothing but cost me money as of the last few years. But hopefully it's getting you guys some new clients. Because then you'll remember my name, hopefully, one day in the future. Hopefully. I have something else I'll do for you, too. There's this thing called Title Pro 24-7. If you want to horse around and have some fun, I do this sometimes. Would you like to know? Remember how I said that these older homeowners that have reverse mortgages, their heirs are going to want to sell the property, and I want you to be the one to choose? Okay, so pull your neighborhood up on Title Pro. I'll give you a video. We have videos to show you how to do this. And you can see everybody has a reverse mortgage in your neighborhood. That's kind of interesting information. Title Pro? Yes. We'll give you logins for Title Pro. That's why you did a sign in sheet. Because I'm going to send you an email on how to get to this website and do all this stuff. And then um, Rick is going to tell you in a second how I don't expect you to remember any of that. Even. And I have a little short, like six minute videos on anything I did today and more. 
because there's more stuff I did not do. I used to do this class in three hours. And then she would have to come in and wake people up <laughs> because they'd be sleeping. That doesn't work anymore. Two hours is a long time. I've been here for two hours. And it's only because you guys are expecting lunch that you're still here right now. Why does it people are still here? I don't know. They're extremely bored. They drink a lot of coffee. You guys are getting fed. But the point of my story is this. There's so much stuff to tell you guys. I don't want you to have to try to memorize any of these things. I want to give you tools to access it. I want to give you ways to get back in touch with me. I want to try to give you easy, quick things you can throw a name and an address in. And maybe that's all you got to do to come up with a list. Dude, that is rad. Well, how's a fun with it? Let's see. Well, they're going to be all the homeowners. Why don't you put somebody in there that's 20 years old and just bought their home? I'm going to call you up. I'll be like, what are you doing? You're going broke. We need older homeowners that we think might need to do something. That's who goes into that website. All right, Marissa, do you want to update me on our videos and whatnot here? Yes, thank you, Ryan. Um, so once again, if you would like to receive um, some information from us, some our marketing materials, please go ahead and um, sign in in our sign-in sheet and or give Ryan your business card. Once you do that, you will be receiving two logins in your emails today. The first one will be coming from Title Pro uh, 247 to set up your Title Pro account. The next one will be coming from us for our website. All you have to do is click the activation link in the emails and add um, and set up a password. Once you're um, on our website, you will see a few resources. The first one is our course refresher, um, is our course refresher, which is a video series of six videos that covers what we talked about in class today. Each video is only eight to 10 minutes long and you can watch it at your own time and your own pace. Um, Brian, if you can move to the next slide, please. Uh, next, you will see our downloadable marketing materials. Um, we have a variety of newsletters, flyers, door hangers, postcards, and more for you to print. You can put um, your information in either the back of in the back of them. Some uh, some of them you can put a picture of your headshot or a business card. Finally, we have our videos and tutorials that you can access. Uh, we have tutorials on how to use your new Title Pro um, logins and um, to find those older homeowners that are likely to sell in your area. Ryan, if you can move to the last slide, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so that, that is our complimentary um, access to our materials and different softwares. If you have any questions about your logins or need support, please feel free to call us at 888-242-5959. Again, that is our realtor hotline and we will pick up the phone as much as we can. If you need to email Ryan or Robert directly, here are their email addresses. And the website, thereverseeducators.com, is our agent resource website. Uh, you will also be able to see our future classes with um, West, West San Gabriel uh, Valley Association of Realtors there as well. Uh, Ryan, do you uh, want to answer any questions at this point? I don't see any questions in our chat box, so you can take it from here now. Okay, so uh, I'll just ask you guys a question. Do you think if a client is uh, ask you about a reverse mortgage because they've been dreaming about getting a reverse mortgage their whole lives? How many think that's yet? <laughs> no, they have not. If they're asking you about a reverse mortgage, it's not because they've always wanted one. It's not because they're so excited like when they got a new car. No, it's because they're a homeowner. They probably have some equity. And they're trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my home in retirement. Am I going to use this for his mortgage, maybe? Get some equity out and get rid of my payment? What's this thing about? But we know that more than half of them that ask never get one. But that doesn't mean that they're still not saying, what am I going to do about this retirement? The reverse mortgage isn't helping me. So you got to hold on to them. You know, snuggle them. Don't let go. And then you whip the listing agreement right out of your trunk, right? What's your name? Seal. Seal. We learned something seal today. Never get caught in the end. Well, now they've got computers. I don't care, man. I care that paper thing around. Then you whip your laptop out of your trunk. Yeah. There you go. Donkey side, with me right here. By the bathroom. Let's go. 
Okay, so <laughs> the idea is that I just want you to, as you guys, you guys feel differently about what it means to get that question now when we came in here. Whatever it's mortgages, you feel that it's different now that I've been through with you. When someone's asking you, it should. You should, and unless you came in here thinking, I know reverse mortgage just have a good chance of leading to me getting business. If you thought about that coming in here, I hope I filled that for you. If you thought it was because a client was hoping to get a reverse mortgage, I hope you now think a little differently about it. I don't know how many questions and people that call us asking about reverse mortgages that we have to get through sometime before we even get one. Imagine getting a hundred calls a month and going on listing appointments. And then most of them don't materialize. That's how our industry is. When I say about it that way, I feel exhausted. I actually think maybe I should change careers, but we have to go through so many individuals that think the reverse mortgage is gonna be a form that don't, that we spend a lot of time just telling people, you're gonna to have to probably think about doing something else. At that point in time, I want to know that it's going back to you as an agent. That this came from Mel. This Mel sent me this guy. Mel, this guy is not working. Mel knows to keep that guy in his Rolodex. Or Mel, you use a Rolodex still? <laughs> is that should I say that? The database. Oh, up here. The human Rolodex. Okay. I'll tell you what, you guys are done. Food is in there, ready to go. I didn't get it out. We got my server uniform today. You're gonna to have to do it on your own. Enjoy. If you guys have questions, let me know. You guys can watch for an email. It's either coming from like Maritza or Crystal. They're back at the office, and they're gonna help you in case you want to hop on the website and have some fun. Hop on the website, have some fun. Make sure you don't pass up opportunity. Use that 888 line. If nothing else, in case somebody has a question, you don't know, they'll just call. There's a good chance you'll get to me or Robert or somebody in my office that will know about these loans. It's done. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we close up, a few quick announcements. I want to say thank you, Robert, Ryan, Marcella. On behalf of West San Gabriel Valley Realtors, we would like to thank you for being our guest speaker and for your informative presentation today. We have an amazing lineup of useful and interesting upcoming classes. Tomorrow on June 22nd, how to win multiple offer situations. June 28th, short sales and foreclosure resource certification on July 12th commercial seminar, how to use the CCIM designation to impact your career. We hope to see you there. Till then, goodbye.